Welcome back to the Eastern Clash of the Heroes Global Championship. We have a series on our hands. Eastar, we're up 2-0. But as always, MVP Black did MVP Black things on Battlefield of Eternity. So we're now sitting at 2-1. Yeah, and you know, Eastar did Eastar things by just throwing the gen in whenever, you know? <laughs> I would have liked the stitches. You know, we know that China's yeah. the random, like, bust out the stitches. I would have much preferred that in that situation. Yeah, how could we forget the stitches? Yeah, After all the stitches wants to play commercials we've seen. Yeah, all the hype, you know? We've got the stitches hanging out here on the set as well. It's just, I, know. I don't know. Well, now, maybe we'll get another chance. Maybe. Because we do have another game. MVP Black so far have chosen two Battlegrounds, finally switching over to first pick. We're not really sure about the trends of E-Star because we just haven't seen E-Star very much, and this is the first loss of the tournament for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it is in a position where they China has qualified so early that even if you have all the debt in the world, it's like, you know, so many trends can change. Like, a month in the world of gaming is like half a year, like a year, you know, in the <laughs> yeah. real world. So it's, it's a, the, the changes that have existed there when it comes to draft priority and map priority is probably colossal. When we look at what Battlegrounds choices are like, um, Eastar does still like things like Tomb. Maybe we could still go there. That is, uh, wait, did we go there? No. no, Shrines and Towers of We Doom. got baited in the first graphic. That's right. That's why you thought we did. That's right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. All right, we're about to find out what the next battleground will be. E-Star does get the choice. It is the loser's pick format, losing the last game, if they want first pick versus MVP Black. Served them well in the first two games. Yeah, I'm sure with that mentality, you know, what happened in games one and two, being in the first pick slot, I can't help but feel like, unless they have, you know, a pocket strategy from the second slot on a specific map, that they're going to be comfortable with that. But we are going here to Sky Temple for game number four. Choice of MVP Black, so Issa are going to be sitting on that first pick here. First thoughts? I like the idea of originally out macroing with a global, but I don't feel like either team is, it's their strength. Both seem a lot more comfortable or at least a lot more calculated when it comes to just, you know, the battle. Just go for a five man death ball, go blow for blow with one another. And suddenly it seems like both teams are a bit more comfortable when it comes to play. Yeah, I think Zeratul is going to be really high up in the draft of this one. Um, Dahaka maybe for teams. Kyocha plays it sometimes. Savage does too. But it really seems like both, just, like you said, want a battle. And Zeratul enables that. If MVP Black picks Zeratul, do they ban Valera? After what they witnessed with Savage there in that game, completely turning the momentum, I can't help but feel like he put the fear of the rogue, you know, into them in that game. That would feel like a win, I would say, to E-Star. A oh, boost of confidence to absolutely. Savage for sure. If you can change a team's priority of heroes purely off your performance in one game, you're just like, got them. <laughs> They're donezo. We'll find out here as Zeratul is going to be the hover here for E-Star. What if, what if Isar, you know, bamboozles and just moves into the Valera directly after the ban on Zeratul? Ooh, the mind games. I, I, I think it's a reasonable approach. I would actually, I would wait until the back half because if you ban the Zeratul and still MVP Black bans out the Valera, you would really won, you know, a complete morale smash here. Uh, but either way, we do see it's going to be the Zeratul removed. Tassadar, no surprise there. Ooh, but this does leave both ETC and Zarya up. So which does E-Star prioritize more? My first thought's Zarya, but I, I, oh my goodness, this is, ETC can provide a bit more maybe when it comes to the map. Zarya doesn't have necessarily the greatest chokehold to expulsion zone, but she trades well. She does have the boss to expulsion zone though. That is a good point. That is a good point. It is usually an influential mark on the map, but it's not a win condition most of the time, too. But global for ETC, yeah, maybe? Possibly. I like ETC a bit more. If they move in towards one of those two, I do like the idea of the ETC above all else. If not, I would like to see a global. I would like a false set pick. Uh, but it's just, you know, again, it doesn't fit to their traits. It's not something that we've seen trending that heavily um, when it comes to the Chinese team. So. I love it. Or just get seeing Jen as comfort pick, you know, just say, well, <laughs> we're going to put you on the carry. Get your backpack ready. We're ready to go. Jump in, says Xing Chen. I love watching a best of five unfold between teams as we get into games four and five because you start out and the picks and bans are pretty fast. Especially in the Eastern region, picks and bans just tend to be very fast, but then slow down so, so much as you get into these later ones, really trying to think out, 
think through, make sure there are, is nothing you are missing. Yeah, I, I love this rotation though for MVP Black. Getting the Tyrael that high up, it enables you to move into a plethora of strategies and compositions as it moves on. But he just goes so well in skirmishing, you know? Tyrael is known as being that brawler from level one. He has some of the higher DPS, but then uh, survivability tools in best cases, like if you actually kill Tyrael early and you cannot escape his passive, it is one of the highest you like damage spells just in the entire game very early on there. So I like the choice. The Ariel locked in. Very early. Insanely early considering there's no Zarya there. Yeah. I, I would have un I would have expected it a bit more of Ragnaros was instead of Zarya picked there to have that, you know, pseudo trifecta when the tassel are gonna be removed. But I feel like is this a bait? It's a bait on a ban, right? It's gotta be. Like they're just looking they're legitimately looking at MVP Black saying so like ban the Zarya. I, I triple dog dare you to ban the Zarya. Which means there's something that they really want. They took the bait. Yeah, I, I feel like there's something huge in this draft, but I can't figure out what it is here for E-Star. I mean, don't get me wrong, Vala Ariel is impactful. And with Malfurion off the table, you know, it's gonna hit tier two when it comes to supports, and that is going to be, you know, Lucio that we typically see and not having the Tass or the Zarya, but you could have Lucio Zarya, but it hasn't worked that well for E-Star specifically, so maybe that's a bit of the thought process here. Either way, they're gonna remove the gray main. I wanna see a Lee Ming for MVP Black. I would really like Lee Ming into the Ariel, a little bit more poke, crippling, you know, the ability to move in. It works well with the map and it works well with Tyrael. They go with the global play and the Muradin. Tyrael Muradin uh, is probably debatably the best double warrior duo uh, in the game. They both have damage, they both have survivability. Uh, they enable kind of one of another in a lot of senses as well. MVP Black, I love the draft. I, I'm afraid of the false end. Uh, I don't know. False is probably better than the Haka because that'll be Sake moving under the false end. And if we have Sake on false end, it won't be Kyocha working towards the global on the Haka, and I think that's a lot safer and a lot better. No, Kyocha playing Tyrael. Diablo Abathur. Diablo Ariel on a non. All right, all right. Oh. And Tychus. Okay. I. Give me a minute here. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. gonna take a mini. a mini. Yeah, take a mini. That's a, that's a dread phrase. You can't steal that <laughs> one from me. My dad <laughs> says that all the time. Take a mini. You know, just take a minute here. I try and figure it out. My goodness. Tychus returns. Yeah, that, that's not the part that caught me off guard. Like I can Diablo, see. Diablo Abathur Ariel. It, it's the Diablo Abathur and the Ariel. And my first thought is like when I see that is like because obviously we saw some power plays, the bait into the Zarya, and it was eaten. Uh, are taken on the side of MVP Black. My first thought is their only focus this game is to just body the second shrine. Like, absolutely ruin it. Because Ariel Diablo is insanely impactful on heavy territorial regions. Top is usually not it. Mid sure as heck is not it. Like, if they fight in mid, it's just like, well, two of your heroes are pretty much useless. Um, you know, especially if they, there's any kind of poke being implemented. But bottom is the most tempo heavy when it comes to setting the tone of the rest of Sky Temple, and it's the easiest to be able to hit those chokes uh, and play it out very well. And if you have Di if you have Abby side soaking the whole time, while you have Diablo Ariel getting that crowd control initiation and heavy kill potential, I can really see you suddenly taking a game that's like level nine to level nine, level eight to level eight, and suddenly you're looking at, I'm a level, I'm two levels ahead. I'm, I'm sitting at 11 to, you know, that nine threshold and exponentially pushing the advantage through this game. Wait. Can you double Molten Core? I don't believe so. It would be, I don't believe so. I've never actually tested that, though. That's a good question. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, wait. I don't think so. You don't get the p passive, but you get passives of other heroes. So then arguably, yes. So then you buy the time, but you don't. If you were to do that, you would move into a support mule. Would you? I'm getting baited so hard right now <laughs> with this thought process. Even if that's a good case, and you can move into the double Ragnaros passive, like, is like, that what, justifiable? Yeah. Like, you just stop some of the bleeding, maybe consume some of the shots, but do you take that risk to lose some of the... Yeah, I don't really know if it's even functional. It just was such a, like, <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. 
<laughs> and this is what happens when you're casting <laughs> very early into the morning. But uh, no, we'll figure it out. You know, I, I, I don't. I, I, my thoughts are still on the second try, though, for the most part, with E Star in this game. All right. I, I, I think that that is going to be a, a huge, huge turning point in this game for them. Here they are. Tiger will be playing that Abathur, SW on Ariel. Savage playing Ragnaros, Lucian on Diablo, and Xing Chen once again playing as Vala. Vala, too, has another trait that could be really good for an Abathur clone as well. Any any of those heroes that have a strong trait, like Greyman, you'll see. Uh, Tychus, we saw some clones at BlizzCon, and of course, Jaina. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I don't see why not. My first thought is why not, Wh right? I'm still trying to figure out, can he use it? <laughs> Abathur can use every other hero's passive in the game. Yeah. That is inactivatable. So then why wouldn't you be able to use Molten Core? I'm pretty sure you can. We're going with yes, but either way, I don't. I don't think the double shot denial is going to be a top tier strategy here. Uh, it could, you know, again, it's going to kind of be stopping the bleeding. But if you use Ragnaros solely for the intent of molten core, clone, to be able to eat some of the shots, the damage output would be pretty significant. But that's going to be it. either way. The Diablo is really the weird one uh, here for me across the board. We'll see if it works out for E Star. We're heading into Sky Temple for game number four. Bit of googling, figured it out. Can't double <laughs> yeah. molten core. Uh, you in fact cannot, so we will not see that strategy. No <laughs> today, you know. <laughs> I can only imagine what your expression would be when you actually witness it, you know. Bye, bye, fire, <laughs> be bird. That would have been uh, strange and seven. maybe a uh, huge game changer here on Sky Temple, but sadly five, not the case. Probably four, double vol event, three. eh? Yeah, double Vala all the way across the sky. One thing we do have to consider is, <laughs> yeah, uh, is the fact that Diablo actually has some of the highest base to auto attack damage in the game. He actually hits pretty hard uh, when it comes to the skirmishing potential there. And double Diablo control, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is respect the Diablo clone. It's not your first thought as a clone master, uh, but he really can, you know, kind of pack a punch if you want this game. But for now, MVP Black with the pressure here on the bottom. They're going to pick up a turret. It's, you know, accelerating the pace of the map. Uh, it's something we see quite frequently, but Esart does not seem to be comfortable with that. Yeah, they are taking quite a while to decide who will defend versus this. You don't want it to be Abathur. Becomes pretty vulnerable. So finally, Savage will come down because he can Molten Core if, he, uh, if this push is continued. Yeah, typically we see the teams comfortable with trading, but it's even better in the sense that, again, you know, Apathur with this crippled early game. Uh, one thing, you know, I didn't think about is the fact that I was talking about, you know, the Ariel pick, if you were going to use the Molten Core by time strategy, you'd want Mule, but Apathur could provide that here. Yeah. Uh, for Esar's draft. Uh, but for now, he's just going into the W, a bit more of the skirmish. It, it can go any direction when it comes to the build so far. Boston in the standard season Markman. Everything is a bit of what we expect so far in the game, but we do have our first shrines. We're gonna be spawning here. E Star is gonna be looking to at least trade. There is, if they fall behind, even when it comes to the first couple of shots, that is a not, not the position you want to be with an Avatar composition, especially on Sky Temple, where you have already lost when it comes to the game acceleration through the front wall on the bottom. Ballstat will be able to pick you off in a lot of the situations if you try and abuse Abathur. Um, so this is a its a key moment, is what I'm trying to say here when it comes to the draft of E-Star and how they play this out. Thankfully for E-Star, though, they did focus on that top lane with Vala Ario, who can push quite hard. So 
because they took down towers, holding on to this temple as long as they can and delaying with Savage and the Abathur Symbio on top of him. That will be a guaranteed fort for Eastar, and that helps them make sure that they are keeping up in experience. MVP Black, recognizing it, did push along in the middle lane as much as they could as well. But it is a, it's a good response, at least Eastar, after losing out from that early rotation of MVP Blacks. Yeah, you see Tiss there trying to get the zone out. Oh man, but the catch on to reset. Beautiful Stoneboar up with the buy the peel, but it's not going to be enough. Abatharak confirms the kill here as Lucian stuck on his own for now. Jing Chen coming to join the fight. Now Twist Tiss questioning if he's in the right spot. Does he door toss out? Falls out with the flight sake. Knowing no hard CC, he's going to be able to get right out of here. But E Star, positive trait when it comes to that skirmish. Yeah, especially having the early fort down. During the next temple phase, even though Eastar did lose towers in the bottom lane, as long as they're hanging out, skirmishing, not losing anybody, Abathur can do work in the top lane, especially if the next move for Eastar is to get bruisers before they uh, they end up uh, moving to bottom lane for reals for the rest of the uh, temple phase. And no matter what talent we see Abathur move, whether it be in the mine slow at seven or into the you know mule, he's he's got a really good mule opportunity on mid. So either way. You know, MVP Black needs to be concerned about what direction it is. He's going to go with the peel onto the mine, so slowing the rotations and control on the map of MVP Black. That is going to be a huge uh, moment here for E-Star in this game. Just the control that Abathur can provide while already being structurally ahead, experience ahead, while you have an Abathur composition. I mean, that's about the dream right now. E-Star here has to feel very comfortable. And extra mines with prolific dispersal to help keep vision around the boss is an extra win for Eastar 2. Next Shrine Temple phase will be starting up fairly soon. Good push starting for MVP Black in the bottom lane, but they've already made the rotation up to top lane to make sure they get bruisers here in the top. And with Falstad to stay up as long as possible, Eastar's goal in the Temple phase will be to try to get Sake to fly down so that Abathur can have control of this lane. Yeah, absolutely. And so the idea is going to be just hard to initiate with the Diablo, probably as fast as possible with the Ariel follow-up. Um, a double stun it will just do enough damage to where even if they survive the attack, Fallside will panic, make the rotation because they're going to forfeit the shots. Uh, but to be honest, I think it might be in best interest of MVP Black of just forfeiting the shots from the beginning. And that's not something you typically say when you see an Abathur comp. Lucian is showing. Ragnaros is still into the mid lane, though. Oh, man, he's in a very tough spot. MVP Black's not feeling confident to move out. Tyrael and Rag are going to make the rotation down. Zun Chen is, gets the heal. Taking a long time to get Ragnaros here is frustrating for Eastar because they want that threat of gonna, making Falstad come down. They're molten core in. They're going to molten core it. Then try and get the damage out here. See if it works out. Lucian getting that speed demon value as they move Ooh. up and reset. Just gets destroyed here by this molten core damage and Jing Chen moving up. And that's exactly what Eastar wants. They're now leading when it comes to experience. They're leading when it comes to structures. And, you know, Falstad hasn't been able to do enough alone up there in that top lane. He hasn't left, but, you know, it's not like he's making too much happen either. Ragnaros is going to come up to help too, so that Abathur may not be put in a risky position being up against Falstad. It is a, a scary hero to play against as an Abathur player. Heroic abilities now available for E Star. Still waiting to see what Diablo picks. Lightning Breath is the choice over Apocalypse. Love it. I A or excuse me, Lightning Breath here. Um, it's not something we see too frequently, but. It wasn't in the latest patch, but it recently was adjusted to be able to, you know, respond to your mouse cursor a little bit more, you know, so when you open with your lightning breath, you can direct it quicker and get more value out of it. It is weird into sanctification, but it can be used like Zeratul in the sense that you can force a sanctification. They'll nullify one another, right? Like where you can force the sanctification by lightning breath. And if you never use lightning breath or are concerned about lightning breath as being your, like, most valuable tool than you in such, such a short cooldown that you actually can just you can weaken MVP Black's team fighting because I mean how often do you look as lightning breath is like that's why we're gonna win this fight you know uh, but if you can force a bad sync that very much is gonna be a powerful resource and there's so many open spaces on Sky Temple to fight that you can't quite get the same value of uh, trying to force people into chokes to get an apocalypse and make people run over their uh, teammates apocalypse would have been dropped on the ground there are some like the pathways up from um, bottom to mid by the Giants. That's a possibility sometimes we see used there. The only thing that concerns me though is, again, we don't see 
as much for a Sulfur Smash to follow up in this case once again. Yeah, the, uh, the Diablo stun against the wall, or maybe the flip, but, uh, you know, in his temp there, with that Sulfur Smash, that Aegis, that's going to be Jing Chen in a terrible spot. Lightning Breath is used, completely lighting up MVP Black here. Gust and Twilight Dreamer used, but Xing Chen still gets out. SW not so lucky. Sanctification used. MVP Black continuing on the chase. They hit the Storm Ball onto the clone, but Tiger isn't going to fall, sacrificing only the experience as he is, in fact, not a real hero. You know, sadly, uh, his nose doesn't grow, but he is not one of the... <laughs> one of these is not like the other. <laughs> and this is going to be the Giants cleared out here for Sake on the bottom. Good clear. We have the Shrine phase. And experience still, though, in favor of Beastar and only losing one, you know, in the longer heroics on the side of MVP Black, Beastar is totally fine in this game. They still have absolute control, really. If MVP Black at least can take out some more forts, get this top four, and they went for the top temple specifically, um, then at least they can hope to push Abathur even further back, making him make more risky placements that Falstad can take advantage of. So one thing also went on the note when I was talking about like what is lightning breath with Saints, like what does that mean competitively, is also that though one can match the other, because lightning, so APOC can counter Say, uh, force a Saint, right? So you can use that as like, well, you could do the same thing with APOC, so why wouldn't you go in APOC? But the cooldown time, right, is so much shorter that yes, one initiation, you can force the Saint, but the second time Saint isn't there. And that's not the same story when you have Apocalypse. Yeah, it's something that we've seen too Tiger. with things like uh, Sanctification. Ooh, Grenade does not quite take out Tiger. Almost he, though. He's walking away there just going, calculated. Yeah, I knew that the whole time. We're good. We've seen that in Europe with things like Sanctification versus Entomb. Same concept. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, you know, Entomb significantly shorter cooldown. Uh, wait a minute here though. That is going to be a beautiful ice block. Misake had to use the Gust. Lucian there as, oh my gosh, Jing Chen is already going to be removed from this fight. Now he's on full retreat. Stormbolt not going to connect there. A bit of anti synergy between Twist and Reset here. Oh, Lucian does not want to lose his stacks. Barely makes it out alive. Tiger drawing away a lot of the aggro on that clone of Ragnaros. SW is back trying to heal back up Lucian so that they can staunch some of the bleeding that is now taking place on structures. Nice flip. Doesn't quite get over the gate, but close. Close, but no cigar. Yeah, and this is, uh, I mean, we've got a game on our hands here. What well, looks like a very confident and controlled game that for E-Star, it's quickly turned around. MVP Black here has an opportunity. They're still down behind when it comes to the structures, but as long as they catch up in the experience and they've opened up the map enough to where Abathur, you know, can no longer wreak havoc. That being said, we have got split push Abathur. Rare, 13 and 16 is gonna be moving into the, you know, uh, sieging, backdooring, if you will, uh, Locust, which is, it used to be the only way to play, but we haven't seen this in a very long time. It seems very bold against a false stat. Not only just into the false stat, but it just, a Sky Temple is not a map where typically the game lasts long enough because one cycle of a rotation of Locust is not like, well, there you go, there he keeps just dead. It's usually, it, you have to not only prep a wave, then you have to send the entire rotation, commit your hat to it. Like, it's not just a one and done type situation and you want as much time as you can. So when you typically see it, it's on maps like Garden of Terror, where you're going to have a 20 minute game minimum and you have open territory to be able to play with those mini waves. So I agree with you, you know, it, it, is, it is risky, but I still, you know, I like this, you know, we talk about the talent diversity out of China, uh, and the app they're build is no exception. Is the onus then on E-Star to create opportunities for Tiger to get those pushes? You know, uh, make sure that they're pushing lanes, maybe with Ragnaros, as we're seeing them do in mid, so that he can move in faster and get the waves going? It's a mix of prepping the wave to be able to aid him, but then also applying pressure elsewhere when it comes to the map objective. So like bottom being prepped so easily by Falstad, can, you know he's gonna be moving top of the shrine because the fight's more important than the siege. But if they had prepped that, then they're all slow to the rotation, but Saki's not gonna stick around, right? So yeah, it is a little bit going to be on them, but in fact, we'll see, you know, Tiger's there applying the pressure towards the bottom lane, committing, there it is, the double locust. He'll be able to push out bottom, but again, that's not going to gain anything for some time. Look at the spread from E-Star. Potential flank from Savage. Makes you think maybe that, oh, spotted by Sake. Kyocha jumps in, holy ground catches. Tiger is there with the clone. So far, Savage trying to get out, but all of Merida on the chase. The anti-synergy there, well, again, when it comes to the clone, pitting him against the holy ground, that's a man down. Tiger 
gets gusted in the rest of the squad. Lucian doesn't have enough there with that speed demon. He is going to be going down as well. He does have souls, though, so he's going to be back in a couple of seconds. Fight from Sake. Xing Chen vaults right on out of the W there. But this is just a falling apart here for Isar in this game. Is that is two members down. Now three here is Ariel walking away. And that is going to be a boss play here for Isar. I mean, the count, or excuse me, MVP Black. I, I, my first thought is like, well, you know, maybe Avatar can split push somewhere, but it just with the mini waves prepped so heavily against them, it's not going to be the case. Sake spotting out that flank too. You can see where Savage is wanting to come in, um, maybe get the double clone on the false stat instantly, just eliminate him, obliterate him in the back before anybody can mobilize from MVP Black. But the spot from Sake and quick reactions from Tist and the rest of MVP Black to get the kill and make make it so that there wasn't going to be a clone anymore there too. Now, it is a shorter cooldown, so it's already back up, but that is a huge win for MVP Black. My this is, power man, I'm trying to find the moment where E-Star can gain the value out of the Avatar, and I, I'm just not seeing it. Uh, hey, you know, with the ranged locusts are, they, they've been nerfed so many times. Top is building, actually, and Sake has pressure on bottom. So this is the first time we're gonna see the Locust get a lot of value. It's just how long can MVP Black, you know, Isar buy time and keep MVP Black down here without actually dying in a fight. Well, Molten Core is gonna come out, can try to maybe stall out any Sophia Smash gets oh ice blocked, but Reset's so close to dying. He's gonna be able to survive as the Gust is used. Strafe is gonna be dropped there as well, so that's a 50 second cooldown that they're gonna be waiting on. Meanwhile, Abathur is doing his thing, and again, he's trying to buy the time. That's why I said you have to prep the waves. He's been up there for probably 30 seconds at this point. He's dropped the Locust already, and just enough to get it up to that key front wall. And in fact, Sake is just going to be like, well, thank you for this. Thank you for the experience. We're going to be just fine here. That's why, again, Sky Temple is such a hard map for this type of strategy. The only other situation where it can gain value is because he's gone into range. You can drop a mine out just out of range out of a keep and then use them to move in and like get a little bit damage over time. But that is not only a cheese, it's just a poor strategy. Like, to be honest, <laughs> it's just not good anymore. Uh, it used to be able to have range and you could actually, I don't know, it's that way back in the day. So not even worried about it. For now, though, the Locust split pushing strategy is crippled. Post 20, it'll get that much stronger, but not a lot. You know, I would argue Hive Mind would be probably more successful, even only specking one talent into um, the hat. I think it will help their team fight that much more. Well, there they had pushed the bottom lane quite a lot. Falstead's going to respond to that. So Easter will move up into the mid. That bottom keep, though, is the one that has taken some damage, at least the structures in front for Easter. Beautiful Holy Ground from Kyoja. Crystal Aegis comes down. Breath might be used. Nope, Lucian just gonna die. Sake now with the flight here, gusting into the wall. Things are getting bad as that is a twilight dream. Three members dead here. Tiger's clone is gonna be going down. Same with Savage. Five for nothing wipe here. If a, oh, even the bolt root, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh no, Mary Day. Mary Day is a <laughs> legend. I have never seen a... That was the best play I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Mary Day on fire. That was blind. Keep taking out. He knew he was there. I know, but still just the confidence is just <laughs> bolt root and he nails it. MVP Black finally finding their footing in this series. And we are going all the way to game number five between E-Star and MVP Black. I, you know, I don't, obviously nobody expected this to be moving on to game number five, but you know, everybody th felt, it felt like, you know, that MVP Black was going to be the more dominant team here. And then going down 0-2 into E-Star, you know, it kind of felt like it was over. You were waiting for the end. The Chen pick kind of came out and you're like, okay, you know, that was maybe not the best here. Uh, but suddenly, I, it, MVP might be able to turn this around. Two drafts in a row that we've been questioning for E-Star though. I mean, to be fair, every Chinese draft has kind of hit a little bit of that flavor, right? Like, I mean, they have that, they have their own style, so much so. That being said, out of all the regions that have their own style, probably the most successful, right? So I, I, I'm not trying to put that in a mocking sense, just that when looking at every draft, you have that big question mark of a pick, right, for the Chinese team. So I, it's just a weird, like, you know, when do you hit that moment where it's like that was the right and that was the wrong, you know, because all of it kind of has that, you know, well, there's the Chinese pick. Just insert, you know, Abathur here, Diablo here, and, uh, you know, or the Chen. 
Man, we are going to a game number five of this series. Being down and then coming back in this series, MVP Black have all the momentum behind them. It looked maybe like a little less momentum on the faces of E-Star yeah. than their first loss to MVP Black. And, you know, you can't help but think that, of course, they're going to feel that way because they have lost to MVP Black seven times. They just keep getting a varying degrees of closeness. You know, in a best of seven, it was only 4-2. Uh, they've gone 2-1 so many times with MVP Black, but it's gotta be so frustrating to get back to this point when you had such a lead. Yeah, it very much has to be, you know, and that is gonna be our MVP here, Sake of this game. And, you know, I think it's worth it beyond just that huge power play of a Gus at the end uh, and being able to lock down, you know, so many of the assists there for his team. I think just keeping the Abathur at bay, you know, because that could have gotten, if there was no global, that Locust build could have gotten out of control, accelerating the value of each one of the shots on the side of E-Star. Uh, but he, you know, Sake, they're going to keep it under lockdown for now. I don't know, though. That bolt route. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I need a. I, I wish we got a replay I've of gotta, that. I've got to go back and watch that actually a couple of times because maybe it might be one of those moments where like I was beyond impressed, but like what if I missed like the, it was revealed at some point beyond just the locust? But if that was just off of a locust, I mean like he's beyond this wall and he blink roots that. He, I, I'm giving it to him, uh, you know Mary Day at least in my heart. You know anytime supports can do flashy stuff like that. I am down. We can actually look at it again. We can? Yeah. We're we, gonna, we're gonna we've got to our bring own? it back up. We've got the power. <laughs> we we've have, got the we technology. Have the technology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll begin for that for you guys uh, as soon as possible. But that Okay, is just, we're ready. Yeah, we, we're gonna look at it right now. All right. So the skirmish here going to break out. We see Avatar. There is a front gate up still available. Stun comes out, you know, Lucian just pretty much gets pinned against the wall here with the holy ground. Not much else to say. Locust should be sewing on mid at the Gust. Man, Sake, look at that. Yeah, this Gust is amazing. So he Sake sees a Locust. Sake put everyone in the corner. We have a Locust on lockdown, so 100% they know that he's going to be there. The front wall, he doesn't show at any point. Seven. Oh, he shows. Oh, okay, he okay. shows. But still, all right. <laughs> so Abathur so was past the wall, but still Merry Day there. I'm giving it to him still. He's still got the spot <laughs> in my heart after that play. So good. Not even necessary. Like, at oh, that point, they're going to win. That's just flash. Exactly. That's pizzazz yeah. for Mary Day. <laughs> it's just full just <laughs> casual route. I just love it, man. <laughs> Every single thing about it in that MVP block. They're going to game five. Game five. The winner of this has to go up against L5. The loser will be going down to the lower bracket. We're going to a break, and when we come back, game five. <laughs> 